Hello everyone. Welcome to Oracle Fusion HCM training by Unokeeks. In this video, we'll see how to enable approvals for a given uh, for a given approval process, and we'll see how to write approval rule to send the job request to a specific user. So we'll see how to enable approvals, and we will see also see how to send them to a specific user for approval. Okay. In the previous video, we've seen how to bypass them, and in this video, we'll see how to enable them. Okay, let's go back to the application and let me show you the navigation from home page as well in case you're viewing this video for the first time. Click on Navigator. Click on Transaction Console. And in this page, you will be able to see the workflow approval process. In the summary screen, you can see the transactions that are undergoing approval process. And in the approval rule section, you can see the list of approval process given by Oracle. And let's pick up create job as an example here. And in the previous video, we have seen how, how this uh, checkbox works. If you bypass approvals, the way it works is any user logs into the application, submits a job request, it job gets created all automatically. But in this video, we will enable approvals by unchecking this box. That's how you enable approvals for a process. And the moment you enable approvals, meaning unchecking this, uh, if you untick this box, you have to write rules. You have to write or configure approval rules to determine whom should the request be sent for approval. So click on configure rules now. Now that we have enabled approvals, you have to write a rule to uh, determine whom should the job request be sent to for approval. And when you come into this screen for the first time, you might see a blank screen. Don't think that Oracle would have given some approval rules and you can, you, you can stick to it or change it. You might see a blank screen in here, or you might see some couple of rules given by Oracle. So it depends, it changes with the version of the application. What I'll do is I will take off one of the branch We'll start off with a simpler use case. And the way you write these rules is you will you will have to basically write if then else rules, if a condition, and when that condition is satisfied, whom should it go for approval? And as an approval, you can use any combination of these. We will be using one at a time, one of these approvals at a time to avoid confusion. But remember in real time, you can use any combination of these approvals. Okay, so let's click on the job condition first. If and I'll call it as a default job rule. Status is active, priority is medium, and I go to configure rule conditions. I'll edit the condition. Select the condition, edit selection. And I want to change this to a condition which is a basically <clears throat> changes to a one equal to one condition, which becomes true for all the jobs. So I'll change this to enter a number. I'll enter a number and I'll select equal to equal to. I'll select enter a number again and I will enter one again. So I'm basically converting this condition to one equal to equal to one. And one will always be equal to one, which means this condition will become true for all the jobs created in the application. And whenever a job is created, I want them to be sent out to a specific user for approval. So I'll select the self auto approve option deleted. And whenever a job is created, I want to send it to a specific user for approval or client has told me that they have to go to a HCM IMPL user for approval. Okay. So what do you do in such case? In such case, you select user as an option and you notice that the plus symbol is not enabled. Click on the then option. You see plus symbol enabled now. Click on users. A user gets added as an approver. Select user, leave it as approval required because we want to send out a for your action uh, sort of a notification where user should see 
an option to approve or reject the notification. It's you, if required, you can also send FII notification as well. Okay, so select the user, select a specific user, click on the drop down, and you can select any user for that matter. Okay, you can probably select HCM underscore IMTL user. Click OK. Let's save the rules. And submit it as well. The first common mistake students do is they save the rule and assume that yes, uh, they have done what is required. But unless you click on submit, the changes that you have done in this particular screen will not be committed. Okay, save and then submit. Don't forget to submit the change. Okay, uh, I'm logged into the application, the same application ZWFP, and I'll go ahead and submit a new request now. Create it. You know, gates enable approval test. Test one. Uh, we will uh, we will uh, create two jobs. Uh, we'll approve one of them and we will reject uh, the other one. So I'll just call it as you know geeks enable approval test. Or it's just change this. Let's call it as approval by HCM IMPL test. Okay, there is a list, length restriction on the code. That's okay. Let me save this to a text pad so that we can send in a new request quickly. Click on next. And if I go ahead and submit this request now, it will go and check in the application. It will go and check in the create job in this particular screen. And you notice that approvals are enabled and then the application will go into configure rule section wherein we said, if one equal to one, send the job request to HCM underscore IMPL user, one will always be equal to one, meaning all the jobs created in the application will go to HCM IMPL user for approval. So let's submit a request now. And you will notice that if you query for that request, if you query for the job, the job should not get created till the time it is approved by the approver because of our create job now we have approval approval process enabled and till the time the job is approved by hcm underscore impl user the job will not be created let's log into the application as uh, in an incognito window as hcm impl user You should see a request pending in your queue. Okay, it hasn't it hasn't come to HCM IMPL user yet. Probably it might be on the way, and it usually takes a couple of minutes for the notification to show up here. And if you want, you can also monitor the request from the transaction summary screen. You can go to transaction summary, take out the fail filter. You will be able to see the job that you have kicked off, and you could see that approver is not populated yet. Approver is not populated yet. So let's wait for a moment. You could see that the job is uh, triggered, but the approver is not uh, determined yet. So it's uh, a workflow approval process is still working out at the rules. Okay, let's wait for a minute here. Okay, I could see that uh, approval notification has been received on HCM underscore IMPL user. If I click on the notification, I see I see the job submitted by a Curtis VT and it is pending for my approval. 
I can either uh, I can look at the details by clicking on this job. I can I can have a look and I can decide whether I want to approve or reject it. Okay, so I'll approve this job. And uh, since there is only one level of approval by Curtis PT, and since we approved it, if you go back to the application and search for the job, the job should have been created now. Because there is yes, there is approval enabled, but and and the job is also approved now. So you should see the job created now. Okay, so let's create a one more job. And this is a negative test case, and we will just call it as a reject by HCM IMPL test. Submit a request. And again, this request should end up in HCM IMPL queue in a moment. And once we see that notification, we will reject the job request. And once a request is rejected, it will never get created. So uh, this job that we have submitted just now should not get created because uh, the approver is going to reject that. Okay, so let's see. Okay, we've got the job now and I'm going to reject this job as HCM IMPL user. And since I'm rejecting this, the job will never get created. So if you go back to the application and search for the job, it will not get created. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many times you click the search, you will you will not see the, jo the job getting created. Okay, so this is how you enable approvals. And in the approval rules, again, you can add in the job rules. You can configure the rule section, add in a default condition like one equal to equal to one. And we have seen how to use a specific user as an approver. Okay, and we have seen a couple of uh, test cases. We ran a couple of test cases. We have approved one of them and rejected uh, other job requests. And we also noticed that only the job requests that we approved did get created in the application as a job. In the next video, we'll see how to write conditional rules. And uh, uh, in one of those conditional rules, I'll also show you how to use auto approve condition. Thank you for watching this video, guys. In case you are interested in Oracle Fusion HCM training offered by UnoGeeks, call us on this number or send a WhatsApp message. Or you can also email us at info at Thank you.